Welcome to this mini lecture on normal and abnormal ventricular compliance. I have several learning objectives that I want to go through with you. First of all, I want you to be able to define the term compliance. Second, you should be able to describe the passive pressure volume relationship for the left ventricle. Third, you should be able to describe how altered compliance affects the pressure volume relationship. And finally, you should be able to relate changes in compliance to ventricular pathophysiology. Let's begin with the definition of compliance. Compliance in physical terms and in looking at a cardiac chamber can be defined as the change in volume divided by a change in pressure. Mathematically, that would be C for compliance is equal to delta V, a change in volume, divided by a change in pressure. And this is true for any sort of volume container, that it, whether it's a balloon that you are filling with air or water or the chamber of a heart or the volume and pressure relationship in a blood vessel. In terms of the heart chamber, functionally, compliance can be defined as the ease by which the ventricle expands with blood as filling pressure increases. To illustrate this, we are going to be using pressure volume relationships for the ventricle. Over on the x on the y-axis, we have left ventricular pressure in millimeters of mercury, and on the x-axis, left ventricular volume in milliliters of blood from 0 to 200 milliliters. We're going to begin with what is called the unstressed ventricular volume. This would be the volume of the ventricle, the volume of blood within the chamber when the pressure is at zero millimeters of mercury. And let's assume in, in, this, in this talk that this unstressed volume is 60 milliliters of blood. If we were to, to now increase the volume of blood within that chamber, the chamber would expand and the pressure would increase, just like if you were adding water to a, to a balloon. As you expanded that balloon, the pressure inside that balloon would increase. And in this illustration, let's expand the volume up from 60 to about 120 milliliters of blood. And this will correspond to now a left ventricular pressure of 10 millimeters of mercury. And this would be the passive stressed volume of the ventricle at end diastolic volume. The slope of this line which is delta P, change in pressure divided by the change in volume, is the ventricular stiffness. Compliance, as we have already defined it, is a change in volume divided by the pressure, which is therefore the reciprocal of the ventricular stiffness. If we were to do this curve for a series of pressures and volumes within the ventricle, we would get a curve that looks like this, beginning with an unstressed volume here and then increasing the volume as the, and the pressure would rise as we increase the volume. Note that this relationship is nonlinear, like nearly all biological tissues. The more that you stretch that tissue, the more it resists that deformation, so it becomes stiffer. And that's shown by the increase in slope of this curve beginning at low volumes, you have a relatively low slope compared to the slope of the curve at, at higher ventricular volumes where the ratio of delta P over delta V is very high. In other words, greater stiffness. And therefore, compliance, which is the reciprocal of stiffness, decreases with increasing volume. This particular curve that we've drawn here is also called the filling curve for the ventricle, or it's also referred to as the passive diastolic pressure volume curve for the ventricle. Now let's see the effects of decreased ventricular compliance. If the ventricular compliance decreases, this passive diastolic volume pressure volume curve shifts to the left and becomes steeper. So the unstressed volume is reduced, but the whole curve is also steeper. 
when there is decreased ventricular compliance, there will be a higher pressure at any given volume. Clinically, what we would see is that at a given end diastolic volume compared to normal, the end diastolic volume would now be reduced. At the same time, the pressure, the end diastolic pressure, would be increased. Compliance can be decreased by a number of pathologic conditions. For example, chronic pressure overload that results in hypertrophy of the ventricle. Chronic pressure overload occurs with chronic hypertension or aortic valve stenosis. This causes the ventricular wall muscle to become thicker in hypertrophies and it becomes stiffer or less compliant. There's a genetic defect called hypertrophic cardiomyopathy that as the heart grows from after birth, it grows and it becomes, it becomes structurally different from a normal heart and it becomes hypertrophied and stiffer or less compliant. There are also restrictive cardiomyopathies where there's altered structure within the wall of the ventricle, even though it may be normal thickness, or altered structure of the pericardial sac surrounding the heart or fluid between the pericardial sac and the ventricle. And these conditions would impair the filling of the ventricle and result in decreased compliance. And there can also be, in some forms of heart failure, impaired relaxation of the heart. And if the heart cannot fully relax, then it's going to be stiffer or it's going to be less compliant. And that would result in generally less filling, less filling volume, but that less volume would be associated with higher filling pressures. And finally, let's look at the effects of increased ventricular compliance. In this case, the curve shifts down to the right. The unstressed volume is increased because now we're going to have a dilated ventricle. And then notice that the curve is also, the slope of the curve is also reduced. So with increased ventricular compliance, this results in a lower pressure at any given end diastolic volume. Typically what happens clinically when this occurs is that there is a large increase in the end diastolic volume of the ventricle and it's usually accompanied by an increase in end diastolic pressure because of altered volume status in the person. Volume overload occurs usually in this condition and so that helps to drive up this pressure along the curve that is, that is uh, shifted to the right. Compliance can be increased by a number of pathologic conditions, including systolic dysfunction, for example, dilated cardiomyopathies, or chronic volume overload conditions, which can result from aortic valve regurgitation or mitral valve regurgitation. Whenever there is a volume overload stress on the ventricle, it responds and remodels by dilating in contrast to a decrease in compliance or a hypertrophy of the ventricle that occurs in response to a pressure overload. Well, let's summarize some of these key points that we have gone over here. First of all, compliance is, is defined as a change in volume divided by a change in pressure. And compliance is the reciprocal of stiffness. Ventricular compliance is nonlinear and therefore decreases with increased volume. Ventricular remodeling leading to decreased compliance elevates ventricular filling pressures and impairs the filling. And finally, we saw that ventricular remodeling that leads to increased compliance, a dilated ventricle, leads to large increases in ventricular filled volume.